What's up, y'all? It's Marcus No Good. You are now tapped in with Vision Vocal. The dig. My name is Marcus No Good. I am a hip hop, R&B, rap star, whatever you want to call it, soon to be. No, I'm just playing. I, uh, I do music. I've been tapped in uh, with that probably since I was like the age of 14. I'm an artist, visionary. I would love to tap into acting. would love to add, add actor to my resume one day. But... I guess like by the time I got into music, I was uh, I was going to school in the suburb suburbs at the time. Everybody kind of knew me in my high school for doing music. It was only like me and another artist who were doing music. He was a grade older than me. I feel like it was low key lit. You feel me? I ain't gonna lie. I uh, I, uh, I did the talent show. I think a couple years. And even in the area that I was from, like uh, at the time, like Plainfield, Bolingbrook, Joliet, Aurora, I knew a lot of other artists in the area doing their thing as well. So. I used to um, do shows at this spot called Mojo's in Joliet. I think it's called The Forge now. Yeah, that's that was that was it was its own scene out there. I mean, you know, until I guess maybe a little bit later in high school, I started actually doing shows in the city. But now I live back out south, so. I think I, I was in the third grade. I was eight. I was like eight years old. I think what was hot. And I think what was hot on the radio. I swear to God, was probably like I think D4L was cracking at the time. I swear to God. I think I was like trying to rap over those type of beats. <laughs> like popping south, real southern. <laughs> that shit was fire. I ain't gonna lie, that shit was fire. Yeah, I was like right in the third grade when I told him, like when I was like, I remember my sister, I never forget what my sister like. I was like, oh, I'm gonna be a rapper. She said, I ain't rap. I don't know what this fuck is say, you know what I'm saying? But I was 14 when I recorded my first song. And trust me, I remember because them shits are still on Facebook somewhere. And if you know me, and if you know me, like my fuckers remember. It was, it was some funny shit, but um, I, it's somewhere on my Facebook. Like, cause like, we ain't even like, I don't know why, I just, that was like when I was in grade school, or yeah, grade school, everybody was on Facebook, like Twitter, yeah. whatever, and a thing like that. That was a social media, so I was dropping all my shit on there, not even on YouTube. I think I rapped over a Wiz Khalifa beat, because uh, he had black and yellow out at the mm -hmm. time. Yeah, I rapped over that shit, yeah, I remember now. Mm -hmm. I had a little studio set up in my basement, I mean, all my, my old homies at the time. I mean, really since I started, because I feel like I haven't really stopped since. I was kind of, I don't know, like, a lot of people I uh, I grew up around, they kind of always knew, like, literally always knew me as being a rapper, because, like, it was, I went to I went to grade school and I went to uh, most majority of high school through the verbs. So, like, a lot of kids, like, I was in school, in middle school, like, went to me, I went to me high school, so they knew me for that, you know me? So... It kind of always kind of stuck, so, and it's, everything's been a learning process, so, you feel me? I feel like, it wasn't like one day, like, oh, I just, I'm gonna start taking it serious. I kind of been taking it serious since the first time I put my, my music out. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was trash, definitely <laughs> trash, like, but it was like a learning, pro you know, it was like a learning process. For sure, I mean, supportive for the most part, you know, I feel like, and like support really isn't even the word for it, but uh, the thing about me is like, even if they don't like it or not, I kind of always was to do my own thing and everything kind of just kind of followed, you feel me? Like the right people as far as they, they wanted to do it, did that. If I if I did that, they would want to do it because they're around me. You know, especially at the time we were a lot younger too. So, you know, and, uh, my parents, as long as my grades are straight, they didn't, they didn't care what I wanted to be. I'm just a solo artist, but I do work with a lot of people closely. Shout out to my engineer, The Deviator, um, my producer left here, that's my dog. Aside from that, pretty much, I got my boy Cash on me. We got, we got some tracks soon to be made. We got some old cuts, like from back in the day. Shout out to him. But uh, it's really just me. But uh, as far as my circle, as far as how I get my workflow done, my producer is like my best friend, and uh, my engineer is my right hand man. So. Shit, after this interview, we finna crack a session down right in this room right here, right now. So. Matter of fact, I really forgot to uh, shout out my boy Emmy. He's, yeah, he's like, yeah, no, we definitely got some cuts. We've been locked in for a couple of years, too. Um, especially with, like, developing the sound that I, I'm kind of coming out with right now. Um, yeah, Emmy's, Emmy's a part of that as well. And, uh, yeah, I guess shout out to my boy Lil B, too. He got a couple cuts on the last project I just released. So, but think about uh, all my production is. Um, every person that who's ever made my beats, I, I know them face to face. I've shook in their hand before, type shit. Like it's we have a relationship. Those are my friends. So I have the luxury of like working with people I'm solely close with. You feel me? So. As the last couple of years, my process kind of got a little bit different than what it used to be. Like I, I think when I first started, I used to always like 
being a creator, I used to really like sit on the computer. I would find beats on YouTube and I just like write them down. Like, this, like I was younger, but you know, now that I got more access to studio time and whatnot, like I bring my producer through, I'll bring my engineer through, or I, you know, we're at my engineer spot or whatever. And, my fellas, they'll cook up in front of me, like straight up. We'll cook up, we just be vibing out, hanging out, kicking it. <clears throat> they'll cook up in front of me, and then, like, by the time the beat done, I got a hook. By the time the hook done, I go ahead and lock it in. Damn. By the time, by the, by the time the hook done, I go ahead and lock it in, and it's like, all right, I'll be like, all right, give me like 10 minutes. I'll probably sit there and like write the verse or start writing the next thing like while I'm sitting on the mic. So okay. it's kind of a timely process, but it'd be organic. I guess I can still consider this because I was in the studio, but I wasn't even really recording. Bro, I think we must have been mixing the album. One of the nights we was almost done completing the album, Traders on Eat, that we just dropped recently. I was just drinking. We had some liquor in that bitch. I'm talking about. You, you know what I'm talking about? Because <laughs> he probably know. This nigga probably know. That was funny, right? Because I'm trying to think like... Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm not the, I'm not the biggest drinker, so I might if I had a little too many. And I'm talking about, I got to the point, niggas had to duck off. I'm talking about... <laughs> I went to the bathroom. I must have went to the bathroom. My homie Mike was on the engineer, like, mixing one of the tracks. He's like, got to the point where, like, where the fuck did Marcus go? Like, looking back over his shoulder, like, yeah, Marcus didn't come back. I'm <laughs> fucking <laughs> 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 was off in the cup, bro. From the business aspect, I would say uh, maybe marketing. Marketing and just like advertising. Cause I feel like when you're an artist and you're independent, especially like when you're doing things on your own, you gotta play more than one role. You feel me? I guess, uh, and I guess it depends as far as your goals as being an artist. Cause like being an artist and as far as creating, that's easy. I feel like for me, it's literally just how I am. It shit just happens. So, but as far as like the levels you wanna take your music, you're even in a professional manner, I would say, yeah, marketing and advertising. Cause you know, you gotta put yourself in a creative mode to be the artist, and then you gotta step back and be the person to promote the artist. And mm -hmm. Really okay. get your music out in different ways. I guess it depends like that, you know? Yeah. Would you yeah. ever go, like, sign with the label? Sure, but I would love to do it with leverage, you know? Right. I would like to um, go about, like, kind of building my own thing with, mm -hmm. with the people I work around. Um, get that audience and once we got that momentum that's what i feel like would be the best time to not approach a label but i prefer a label to be approaching me you gotta kind of right. make them you gotta you know they gotta you gotta have something they want you feel me yeah. i wouldn't want to sign no like 360 i'm not getting you know <laughs> you feel me i need to yeah. run my own show especially if you're the type of artist who got vision like you know, if you're a visionary i, I kind of see i see how i want the shit to go down so right. if they can't help or contribute to it there's no point in doing business I mean, I've had a lot of problem with moments, but I, I, I guess recently, just uh, the body of work I recently just came out. I, I don't even, I didn't really had a chance to probably promote it, but Traders Don't Eat, the EP by Marcus No Good, that's my most recently, bo a recent body of work. I just dropped that back in February. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, doing that and then having the, the listening party that we did, like the night it dropped. That shit was uh, that shit was surreal for me. I had a, I had a good time and it's just like seeing everybody who came out to support, you know, me and like what me and my homies put together and all the time we put into it. That was it was a proud moment for me. I still got the the recap video on YouTube and the fact that that's being like in the middle of a pandemic and like, having people come out to support you at the event. It was dope. We sold some merch. We it was a pretty cool thing. It was last minute, but like the the right the right amount of people and the right people came. So and obviously just having that body of workout because. Uh, you know, I've been making music for a long time, but as far as up to date, that's something that I feel like five years from now, I can look back and be like, yeah, I'm still proud of that body of work. That's like some good music, in my opinion, you feel me? My jet in the cut, I ain't gonna lie. You wanna jump in this? Nah, you don't even wanna do all that shit. All right, well, my, <laughs> my boy left here. Uh, that's my producer, that's my main producer. That's my dog, and uh, my boy, The Deviator. Uh, my boy Mike, because they were probably with me a lot of steps of the way. Mike, Mike is my engineer, and it's like honestly, they, they execute, they executive produce the project as well. I gave them the credit as that as well, just because like there's been a lot of nights we was in the studio locked in. Mike was letting us slide through over at Gremlin. Shout out to Gremlin over at the Aurora and shit. But we've been locked in. It took a lot of time to get it to what what it is right now. I ain't gonna lie. I'm sure a lot of people can relate, but you know, I don't, I don't mix. And I don't engineer my, or I don't, I don't engineer my own music, and I don't mix my own beats. So in order for me to do that and create the sound that I have, I have to work with others, and them, them definitely my people. Right there. 
this year I'm trying to do more events. I, I mean, I see things are opening back up. I guess uh, tours are going back on in 2022. I'd love to do a small tour or something for this album that I just dropped this year. By then I'll, ha I'll have new music out as well. So I, I would like to, I guess depending on the timeline, I'm gonna drop another project. I kind of already got the tug ready to go. Some, some that's been ready to go. So I think they drop another project, but I want to keep pushing out the work I just dropped and uh, eventually get some studio equipment so I can uh, keep bringing good music to the people, you know? Are you somebody who ever looks at the future like five to 10 years down the line? Or do you kind of take it day by day? I think it's both, I think it's both. I feel like, more so now though, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? I feel like, and that even kind of comes with like a lot of people's music, you know, you got people who make like trend sudden type things, you know, or like something can, can become a trend and then like it can only go as far as what it is. And you get everybody who follows it, and then like once that wave dies, like all the people kind of wash out. But you know, and then you got your artists like you got your artists like Kendrick, J Cole. You know what I'm saying? Drake. These motherfuckers, they drop bodies. These drop bodies of work, and it be like you feel it when they when they drop. You know what I'm saying? Because that's time. What you call timeless music? You can go back to that. You know, it still kind of sounds like sounding came today. The album they dropped me ten years ago. So I think it is more so. Depends, but as far as my sound or everything's how I do things right now, I live for the now. It's kind of hard to not, you know, be timeless, you know, for it to benefit out in the future as well, you know. Right. Have fun, be original, and just like be experimental because it's really oversaturated right now, man. There's a lot of people doing a lot of the, a lot of everything, the same thing. It's always good to. Just stick to say to yourself because that's what's gonna help you stick out, you know? Yeah, I mean I feel like I never really sounded like nobody. I feel like maybe beat selection wise I can I can sound like some things or two, but uh I would say now as far as like where I just got in my career now being that, you know, today's you know, I could, I would say maybe as the last year or two, I feel like I finally kinda honed in the sound that not only am I proud of, but something that's kinda Remarkable, something that mm -hmm. like if you hear Marcus Noga, you know that's him type shit. Yeah. And it all comes down back down to the production, back down to the mixing and the engineering. That's why I, I be working with my people so close. You feel me? Just being like loved, like literally just watching people, watching people receive the art that we create. You know, um, because. You know, that's what music is, like it's really a craft and uh, watching people receive it and just kind of love it the way you love it. Because I feel like I probably wouldn't be doing it, if, you know what I'm saying? Right. You want to play your song? Yeah. What you want, like a like turn up song, like some shit? What, what should I play him, bro? Should I play him some off of One Way? You ain't got none? I need Mike. So Mike, many, Mike know what it is, bro. <laughs> I was going to play him that, uh... <clears throat> I was gonna play on that. They ain't tell it. Yeah, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, I get to the guap, I got more to make. Watch how I wake up in quarter day. Remember when they were supporting me. Expensive, it takes like a four day. The bank teller must be get bored of me. The bank teller must be get bored of me. The bank teller must be get bored of me. The bank teller must be get bored of me. We go just like I'm in a robber bank. I run it, I need it out of the lake. Ain't nobody else on top of me. The bank teller must be get tired of me. Came up about three or four times a day. This is one way she'll get out the way. She keep coming back like a boomerang. The bank teller must have caught on the me. I'm in this place. That's on my album. So, yeah, I got an album. I got an album. It's actually a funny story. I actually had, I've been had an album I was working on. It was it was so raw to me to the point I'm like fuck I don't, I don't want to work on this right now I took a break and then I made TDE which is a whole it was it's crazy the process how it all happened but yeah TDE so it's like I got an album on the way but Traders Don't Eat is still actually the most very most recent music I've made I got a lot of shit from like last summer on a body of work that uh, I haven't released yet. I just did it on some cool shit. I think one of my favorite artists at the time was like Joey Badass, so I inspired it. But as far as like no good, I just kind of always felt like a mischief coming up and just kind of out of place. And the word kind of just for me means like, what's the word? I mean, just kind of like isolated, but more so just misunderstood, you feel me? So it's kind of what I got. Cause I make, I, I would say I kind of make a, a lot of positive uplifting music in like a, obviously a cool way. I feel like that everybody can fuck with. And also, I, I got my type of songs where I really kind of express like my emotions, or I feel like I might have a different song that can touch a different audience, kind of like on some Drake shit or whatever you want to call it. But uh, 
you know what I'm saying? I feel like when you hear my name and they like the and the music to like follow it up, I feel like it's never what you expect. You know what I'm saying? That's why it kind of goes back hand in hand being misunderstood. Mm -hmm. So did you have any names prior to that? <laughs> I was uh, what, like first. I think I was. I was not think. I was Kid Mars. I'm just trying to think when I was Kid Mars. That's what I used to go by. Cause remember I told you, Kid Cudi's my favorite yeah. artist, and uh, Mars was kind of like Marcus, I guess. And yeah, that's oh, what I. Sure. I was in like grade school. I swear to God, I was. Oh yeah, yeah. No middle school. I was like in middle school. <laughs> I think I changed that when I was a freshman. That's what I'm saying. Like, a lot of motherfuckers who know who support me to this day, like, they know they know I was making music and, like, since I was a kid, I was a little shorty. It's always dope. Like, a lot of times, me and bro, like, we be, like, a lot of times we'll have a solid idea, but a lot of the videos that we have, like, out right now, currently, a lot of them are improvised, and, like, Jake's great at what he does. Like, I feel like I never have to worry about it, at least as far as editing or anything goes like, bro we just got that chemistry and he supports me crazy like he i know he like and genuinely fucks with my music and i genuinely fuck with his you know artistry as a videographer so it's always easy he's not the only person i work with but uh most people that i tap in with you know a lot of times i kind of come with an idea and you know i i you know i i even i even go get into treatments like i try to write you know i, I kind of give myself my director credit on a lot of my videos too because i'll be you know bringing a vision but I always want to link with a videographer to help me bring it to life. I work with my boy Doug Kumada. Who else? I just tapped in with my guy Rod from Chicago. Uh, I got a couple out there. My boy Joe McGrath. I go, uh, yeah, and it's like these are all people like I would consider my friends too. Everything that I, you know, I do as far as the people I work with, it's pretty consistent. You know what I'm saying for the most part, and um, you know I feel like that makes the workflow just a lot more genuine. You feel me? Shit, I got I got features. Yeah, I got features. Uh, you know, you know, Mick Jenkins is from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, who Superboy is. I, 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 or do you know Sab? You know Sabo? I got features from all three. I mean, but like they're kind of old. But uh, I mean, as, and as far as like locals too, like people I met off social media, or we might just know through like mutual people. I got songs with people. You know what I'm saying? But. I kind of knew I wanted to do a listening party the day the album dropped. As far as how it went down. We we did it at the studio I recorded the album at, so that's why everything was just so kind of perfect. Uh, shout out to my boy, the deviator. He was able to allow us uh, to use the, um, it was the rehearsal space of like the venue, or of the studio. So I mean, you just have to be there. Like when you walk downstairs, you loop around this hallway to get to the main studio. They have three of them there, but this is all downstairs in the basement. And uh, the reason why you're looping around that hallway is because on the other side of the door is this big rehearsal space. So okay. we might have fit about like 40, 50 people in there. Like probably could have been more, but yeah, it was it was pretty it was pretty you know pretty decent amount of people. And uh, as far as us like making it happen, um, I think I might have put a flyer out like a few days before the album drop. As far as like, hey, we doing it, you dig? So everybody pulled up to that, you know. It was cool. It was kind of last minute. I mean, if I would have did it way too planned out in advance, it would have been way too many people. And plus, you know, we got this whole COVID shit going on, so got to social distance, don't we? <laughs> I had like, I had like five, six cameramen in that bitch. Right. Honestly, it was lit because I had somebody get some back uh, the. The recap footage, I had like three or four cameramen in there. It was more right. so just like a big ass photo shoot yeah, with all my homies, sure. all my music playing in the back. Yeah. And she was lit. It was special because like, damn, everybody really came here for me. I had made some uh, some hoodies, some merchandise for the album as well, some limited edition merchandise. And we sold a lot of it off the table. A lot of people came to and supported. Um, handing out stickers. I, w I, was, I was trying to get out hard copies and actually, hard copies still might be on the way, but you know, we was trying to do all the merchandise. And it was, it was dope, it was a dope experience. Especially after being like, Cooped up in the crib for the last year, everybody, like, and at the time frame when it happened, I was really appreciative for everybody. Like, yeah, I always kind of consider myself like a, a bridge. I feel like I always help the right people meet the right people. So that was definitely, you know, you came in, definitely a good event to, uh, you know, meet somebody new. All right, but yo, it's your boy Marcus No Good. You can follow me on all social media M A R C U S N O G O O D. Appreciate you guys tapping in. Thanks for watching the Vision Vocal.